Hey guys, welcome to Legit Street Cars. This is kind of a random video that I've wanted to make for years on a car that I've wanted to check out for practically my entire adult life. So I have either lived in the same neighborhood or my mom has lived in the same neighborhood for my entire life basically. So I'm always around here. And ever since I was a little kid, there has been a white LT1 Trans Am that has been parked primarily in the garage of this house. I'd see it in the driveway every once in a while and it was pristine, chrome wheels. I always really liked the car, but I never met the owner, which later became a little odd because I've always been into F-bodies. My first car was an 88 Trans Am GTA. My second car was an 89 Formula 350. My third car was a 91 Grand Marquis, but my fourth car, a car I still own today, was a 2001 WS6 Trans Am. It's got a turbo on it now and it runs nines. <laughs> always loved F bodies and I've always wanted to talk to this guy and check out his car and I finally ran into him. So I remember this car is just being perfect except over the last couple of years it's migrated to the backyard and it just looks completely abandoned at this point. So I ran into him on a walk. I always walk past this house even though it's not really in the direction that we normally go but I've always wanted to run into him and I did and he's a super nice guy and he said I can come check out the car. Not exactly sure what's going to happen today. I've brought the lightning with a bunch of tools and a jack and he's gonna meet me out here in about 20 minutes or so so we can look at this car and see where we go from there I hit it for a while and I got a lot of parts in this I blew up the engine I was driving 294 and uh, blew up the engine and I put five thousand dollars to get a new engine wow so, yeah. is, is it stock or is it modified it's a LT1 they put a new block there okay it, they just kind of swap so oh. early how many miles are on it? I'm not even sure. I'm oh, we're gonna sure. find out. <laughs> I'm not even uh, sure. You said you do have the keys, right? I, I, I'll go. I'll check out the car and open it up. Yeah, be careful, but I, sometimes you might be animal. Might be a big squirrel in there. It might be. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't want to think about it. I'm scared. <laughs> so he thinks there might be a squirrel in here. When I first walked up, he's like, "Be careful. There's gonna be a big animal in there." So. Super nice guy. And yeah, he's had the car for like at least 20 years, something like that. Okay, let's see. Okay, now I believe, can we see the mileage? Is it digital like on my other car? Okay, 125,000 miles. It is an automatic. And let's see what we have underneath these seat covers. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna say probably not in the best of shape. Yeah, you can see in here, the bolster is kind of messed up. Very typical for, well, really any 90s GM car with leather. All right, so I just popped the hood. Now there are some prints back there. So yes, there definitely have been animals going on in here. I'm just gonna kinda knock on the door here. <laughs> you never know. You never know what you find. Oh, this is brutal. This is, yeah, lots of leaves. No animal yet. This guy is awesome. He's like, I'd be scared. Don't open it. Don't open it. He's like, there's got to be an animal inside of there. I don't see anything yet. I have a feeling maybe he knows more than I do. Oh, man, this is bad, guys. Quite honestly, this is one of the main reasons I got into F-bodies. This is like the first one I had seen on a normal basis. And I was just dreaming in grade school, like, one day I'm going to own one of those cars. And then when I was 15 years old, I bought my first one, obviously a different generation and stuff, but I always wanted a fourth gen and when I was 18 or 19, I bought the WS6. So. so you could say this kind of started it all for me. This car right here is a big reason why I love F-bodies. Right now it doesn't make a lot of sense, but this was really, really nice. <laughs> This is a lot better, let's take a look. Um, I don't see any harnesses that are chewed up, but I would venture to say something did live in here. Many things might have lived in here for quite some time. It kind of smells, there are droppings everywhere. But here is a totally stock LT1, by the way. It's kind of rare to see this. Stock air box, stock exhaust manifolds. I'm sure the OptiSpark has been replaced a million times, but here you go in the wild, a totally stock LT1 car. 
All right, guys, we got the pressure washer ready. We're about to cut through all of the dirt on the Trailblazer and, of course, the Trans Am. This is going to be so satisfying, and I know this car can look good. It was gleaming just a few years ago, and I'd like to think that some of that finish is hiding underneath the dirt. But before we get to that, I got to let you know about the biggest blowout sale of the year on the Avalon King Armor Shield 9 Complete DIY Kit. And here it is, the absolute biggest sale of the year, up to 45% off the DIY kits and they're throwing in a bunch of free products on top of that. So you're going to get free microfibers, free microfiber wash mitts, free buffing towels. These are super plush. You'll love them and free wash and prep shampoos that create a ton of foam and are normally $17 each. All you have to do to get the deal is click on my link in the video description box or comment section, but it ends November 30th, 2021. So if you've always wanted to coat your car, this is is definitely the time. I'll also leave linked below a four minute tutorial video I made on how to properly coat every exterior surface of a car, but it's super easy. After you've cleaned your car, just apply the coating to the supplied applicator pad, wipe it on, wait a minute, and then wipe it off. It's that easy. A ceramic coating forms an invisible layer of protection on any exterior surface, protecting your car from the elements. Because it's ultra hydrophobic, water just beads right off and dirt won't stick to the surface, meaning your car stays cleaner for longer. It also gives painted surfaces a deep glossy shine like no other, and you can coat the glass, the wheels, so brake dust doesn't stick to them, and it's one of the best trim restorers on the market. You guys are gonna love restoring trim it's instant gratification. You can coat a car in a couple of hours, but the protection lasts for a couple of years. So coat your car before the winter hits and get the kit before the sale ends. These make a great Christmas gift too. And with that, let's blast this TA. All right guys, I'm obviously not at the shop. So I have my little portable cheapo with me. It's got a bit of a leak, but it's got some power. Let's try it out on the Trailblazer hood first. Okay, that's my absolutely horrible attempt to write LSC, legit street cards on the hood of this car. <laughs> but wow, look at this. This takes it right off. All right, here we go. First wash in, how long has it been? Oh, uh, been a while. <laughs> been a while, all right, been a while. Here we go. Yeah, this is gonna take a while. Woo! I, I just can't resist, I can't resist. It's a TA, it's a TA. <laughs> All right, that was the only nozzle I had, but luckily Mel has a couple of his own. Okay, that might work a little bit better, a lot faster. All right, so I wasn't really prepared for this, so I didn't bring too many supplies, but uh, Mel has some purple degreaser, so I think a better route right now is just to soak all of this dirt for a few minutes and then hit it with the pressure washer. It's kind of weak. We don't have the best nozzles for it. We gotta work with what we got. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and pre-soak some of this dirt in some degreaser. I've never done this to a car before, but desperate times call for desperate measures, and we need something strong to get all of this dirt off. This is brutal. Obviously the paint's not perfect, so I'm not super concerned about introducing any scratches or anything like that, but we also don't wanna to be too tough on it and ruin the paint completely. This is gonna take a while, that's for sure. <laughs> Gotta get some of this green stuff too. Look, there's literal moss just growing on this car. This car's alive. All right, I've let this sit and dwell for a while. 
Much better. Nice, this is cutting through like butter now. <laughs> so cool. I normally start top to bottom, but I gotta do this hood. This is too much fun. Look at that, this is gonna be a presentable car. Like if we could get this running, the interior needs some work, but I think it's gonna show really well. So far, I don't see any clear coat failure at all. And even with this cheapo pressure washer, it's cutting through like butter now. This has gotta be one of the most satisfying things I've ever done. All right, let's see what happens with this mold. Goodbye. And the green stuff. Oh, I'm sorry, Mel, the pressure washer took off the Plasti Dip. Something tells me he won't mind, though. You guys gotta go find yourself an abandoned car and just wash it. So far, so good with the paint at the top of the doors. This usually fades out because the sun hits it. And we'll see what this looks like. These are usually in rough shape. Actually, the LS1 cars, the ones after, I believe, 98, had a big issue with this panel. They used some kind of glue that would bubble and the paint would come apart. It was horrible. Not an easy thing to fix. You'd have to replace the entire thing. But luckily, they didn't cheap out on the old LT1 cars. And I don't see any bubbling. This looks to be in great shape. And it's about to get a lot better. Good. Does it look like your car again? <laughs> yeah. Right? It's yeah. getting there. Oh boy. You know, with that purple cleaner, it's really coming off oh, nicely. Yeah. I don't see any clear coat peel either, so cool. this that thing nice. might still be in the condition, well, close to the condition that, that I remember it in as a kid. I just parked this car because I never used it. You know, I got too many cars. You got something else in the garage, don't you? Yeah. What do you got, a Chevelle? Yeah. All right, after we clean this, I got to see the Chevelle. All right, okay, <laughs> okay. All right. All right, I got the fender hood and door done. Here is a little glimpse of what it will look like. All right, let's just, let's, let's do this.
wow, this isn't bad at all. And I still have to actually wash the car. I don't even have a bucket. We're just gonna pour some soap on my little microfiber mitt and go to town. Probably the least proper car wash you've ever seen on my channel. This definitely ain't no ammo NYC going on right now, but I still think this car is going to shine and we're working with the tools that we were given. Is there a sticker, a number eight sticker? Yeah, that's a number eight sticker. I know absolutely nothing about NASCAR, so let me know who's number eight, or at least who was number eight in the 90s and 2000s. I, th that is gonna sound so bad. Like, I don't even know if the numbers get retired and go to someone else in NASCAR. I have no clue. I'm an F-body guy, not a NASCAR guy. Nothing beats the WS6 hood on the LS1 cars, but I still really liked the louvers that they put on the normal LT1 Trans Am. I think that looks really good. <laughs> Right, let's blast this hood off. This will give us a glimpse of what the rest of the car will actually look like when I'm done washing it. Not bad, not bad. It's kind of an overcast day. It's actually raining on and off here. But yeah, the clear coat on the hood is perfect. We could buff this hood out. It's got little chips. Here and there, it's not horrible, kind of just normal wear, but we could buff this thing out and it would look really nice. This is new to me, I've never cleaned glass this dirty. Equally as satisfying, I must say. All right, I have most of the car done, except for the back, this ought to be good. Wow, this part's been soaking the longest in the purple power cleaner or whatever it's called. Yes! Woohoo! <laughs> Let's just take one long slice at this bumper. All right, so right now Mel is gonna fire up his air compressor so we can get some air in the tires on the passenger side. Mel, what do you got going on here? It's a Malibu, Chevelle Malibu. Oh, it's a Malibu? It's Chevelle, Chevelle, it's, but it's a Malibu. It's not a 396. What, what do you got under the hood? 283, two speed power drive. I gotta see this. Very nice, very nice. I got this when I was in California. Oh, okay, so rust free probably? Oh yeah. Not it's a Chicago rust -free. car? <laughs> no, it's not a Chicago car. I love the color. Oh yeah, it's a gunmetal gray. Yeah, it's beautiful, man. Oh man. I spent money on this a long time ago. It sounds like a big block when I started it. Will it start up right now, you think? Oh yeah, oh, yeah. I had a 68 Camaro that did have a big block in it. Yeah. But it was like, it was a big block out of a mid to late seventies pickup truck. And yeah. it, it was totally stuck with all the emissions stuff on it. <clears throat> My Camaro sounded like an eight second race car, but it was oh, probably man. like a I 15 second car. You, yeah, probably, you might've seen you it see out in front it? of my house. I yeah, I had it for a few years. I, I drove it quite a bit actually, nice but yeah, people thought it was really fast. I mean, it was like minivan slow, totally stock, <laughs> emissions regulated, big block. It was, it was horrible. They were uh, Dean, third houses away. He got a lot of muscle car. Really? 71 Trans Am, he's got a... Uh, I've seen the I've seen these cars. How have I never met you guys? <laughs> this is crazy. 
Remember that old guy, uh, what's his name? I think he passed away, but he's got a Catalina and a bottom. Yes, yes, yes. Jim, Jim. Jim, there you go. Yeah. I've never actually met Jim, but I see these cars cruising around the neighborhood oh, forever. Yeah. I don't know how I don't know these guys. I'm a, I'm a tad bit younger, I must say, but we should still be hanging out. Sounds like a race car. Sounds like a big block. Right? Yeah, it sounds good. See, these old cars will fool you, but in the opposite way. They sound really fast, but a lot of them aren't really fast at all, unfortunately. Especially to today's standards when we have factory Hellcats and stuff with 700, 800 horsepower, whatever they have. I like it, Mel. Oh, it sounds nice. I know we're about to hit December here, but <laughs> next year, oh, yeah, you gotta have this on the road. Oh, Maybe yeah. this will be on the road, who knows? Oh. <laughs> While he's getting the air compressor going, I am washing this car which is also very satisfying because there are some areas that we weren't able to clean up entirely with the pressure washer. I'm probably gonna have to do this a few times because I'll most likely miss a few spots, but I spent about an hour and a half pressure washing this car. It's like a lot longer than I thought. Let's see here. This is coming out. Cool. What do you think? It looks good, buddy. Looks to bring bringing good. back memories? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This sure is. This the, car, I used to drive this car. Everybody loves it. I know I loved it when I was a kid. I mean, <laughs> it's a it's a past car though, five point seven liter. Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't have the time. Right. So after talking with Mel a little bit, he did buy it in the '90s, so it wasn't that old, and that kind of makes sense because I'm 37, so I've been seeing this car for about. 25-ish years, something like that. So I must have been walking by when this car had 20, 30,000 miles on it. Uh, it has 125 on it now. The car does have a new engine in it though. So let me know if you wanna see a video of me trying to get this thing fired up for the first time in. I think we're figuring it out. It's been about six or seven years, something like that. So let me know in the comment section if you wanna see a future video on this thing running, but take a look at what we've done. So this is what the car looked like when I got here just about four hours ago. It had literal mold growing from the doors, dirt and debris caked up on every inch of this car. It was nasty and this is what we have now. We got some air in the tires. I have washed the car and dried the car, and it's obviously not perfect. A lot of times with plastic bumpers, the paint color doesn't match. This is a little bit more than that. I would imagine we'd need to respray some parts of the car. Maybe we can buff this out, polish this out, um, but overall, there isn't any clear coat damage to the entire car, which is a little surprising. And the chrome wheels do have a little bit of pitting on them. And I can hear a little bit of a leak. Yep, leaking right there. That's very common. Lots of chrome GM wheels were recalled for that very issue. But we do have a little bit of the Plasti Dip coming off of the Trans Am right there. But take a look at this panel. It's in great shape. Needs a good buff but it's solid, it's not bubbled up or anything like that, like the later ones. But take a look at the back of the car. This is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like after. Much, much better, very presentable. If you saw this car driving down the street, you'd think it's just a normal Trans Am, so you don't see too many of these anymore. So something like this is actually kind of a rare car. It's a 1996, so the last year of the LT1 was 97, and I honestly can't tell you the last time I saw an LT1 car, just a normal LT1 car cruising down the road. And it's very possible that one day, Mel might be cruising this thing down the road once again. Especially now that it looks so much nicer, it's kind of a little bit of motivation to get it back up and running. So this is what the hood looked like before. And here we are after. And this is what the molded door looked like before. And here it is after, much better. And there you have it, a clean title 96 LT1 Trans Am, 125,000 miles. He said it has about 5,000 miles on what's most likely a stock rebuild engine. And Mel said he would part with this car. So if there are any LT1 fans out there, follow me on Instagram and on Facebook at Legit Street Cars. And after I talk to Mel, I'll see what he wants for this thing and I'll post it up for him. Now with that, we have this. Oh, uh, you gotta be kidding me. It is raining again. I just dried this thing off and it was perfect. 
Uh. All right, guys, I'm back in my home garage. The weather just isn't cooperating at all. It's been raining on and off all day. I'm completely soaked from the rain and the pressure washer that's leaking, and it's cold outside. So I am freezing, I just wanna go in and warm up, so I'm not gonna get to cleaning the trailblazer in this video, but let me know in the comments section if you wanna see a future video of cleaning the trailblazer. Also, let me know if you wanna see me start that Trans Am. If we do it, I'm gonna to have to bring it back to my garage or legit three quarters and do it properly. So we wanna pull the plugs, lubricate the cylinders, turn it over by hand. He thinks that the engine only has 5,000 miles, so we definitely don't wanna damage it. Uh, so let me know if you wanna see a video on that. Maybe we can even take the thing for a spin, who knows. Also, I might have some future content on my Turbo Trans Am, which is hanging on the wall. It's been in a couple of magazines. I have some ideas for some modifications on that car that I might wanna take care of towards probably the end of winter after I have gone through a few other projects. But let me know if you wanna see the resurrection of my very own white Trans Am as well. So with that, this video is over. If you haven't already, give it a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe if you're new, and most importantly, have an awesome day. I'll catch all of you in the next video.